Welcome back for another Me Made Sew Along video where today we're going to work on recreating a gorgeous but super simple linen shawl that you can wear all year round. So inspiration for this project actually came from a website called Sonda Floor that sells linen clothing and accessories along with some wool coats and other items. So if you're not familiar with them, I will have a link to their website in the description box below that you can check out after this video. So we are actually going to be recreating a shawl that they have on their website that I recently found and it's made from 100% linen and would be a great beginner sewing project. So if you're needing sources for linen, I will also have those linked in the description box below. Um, I personally love buying tablecloths from Target in this flax color or I buy the ones in all white and then I dye those with natural dyes to get the color that I want. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So you're really only gonna need a sewing machine that's capable of doing a straight stitch. Gonna need some coordinating thread, your linen fabric, scissors, an iron, and a tape measure. So if you're interested in sewing along with us, grab your supplies, let's get sewing. So once you're finished cutting your piece of linen fabric, 55 inches by 55 inches, go ahead and give it another press if it got wrinkly. Um, linen is one of those fabrics that can be tricky to work with sometimes because it does wrinkle really easily. So iron it before, give it an iron after. Um, once it's done and you've sewed up all the edges and everything is pressed how it should be, you won't really need to iron it again unless you want to. Um, linen does really look nice after it's been worn and broken a bunch and it kind of has those wrinkles to it. It's kind of the look that you want. Um, but again, if you want to press it when you're finished, you're welcome to do that as well. So if you're not comfortable ripping your fabric along the straight of grain like I did to get the right size, it's okay to use a pair of scissors and a tape measure and just cut your piece of fabric 55 inches by 55 inches. That's perfectly fine. So after your piece of fabric is cut the dimensions that we're going to need for this project, you'll want to go ahead, double check that the measurements and the cutting is correct and give your fabric a press. I folded my piece of fabric in half. We're gonna check it. So keeping it folded in half, it's gonna make cutting a little bit easier. So now we've double checked the width of our fabric and I know that that is 55 inches. Now I'm gonna check the length. I know my piece is actually a little bit too long. I was working with a huge tablecloth. So linen is a natural fiber that will actually shrink and kind of move when it's washed anyway. So don't worry about being too specific. Get it as straight as you can and just give it a good press. So as you can see, this piece of fabric is quite large. Um, and if you look on their website, you'll see how they kind of styled the wrap. It looks like it wraps around quite a few times before they tie it in a knot or wear it different ways over the shoulder. So if you don't really want it this large, you could definitely cut it down to a size that's more comfortable for you. But I'm just trying to recreate the wrap that they actually sell on their website. So a definite positive for using a tablecloth to create this project, depending on what size you buy, is you should be able to leave one or two edges intact with the seam. So that's what I've done here. I only have one very long end that's done, but that's one less end that I actually have to press and do sewing on myself. So 
So for this next step, I'm gonna be using this little hot press, which is just a flocked ruler. Um, I think I used this in my last tutorial, but it's great because you can actually iron right on this to get your seam allowances really even. If you don't have one of these, just use a regular tape measure. We're gonna measure up and press at a quarter inch and then fold that quarter inch over one more time and press again. That way that raw edge is completely enclosed within our seam. For pressing linen, I personally like using my iron with no steam on it because it tends to stretch the fabric out a little bit. So just make sure that when you start pressing the edges of your wrap, that you're folding all your fabric the same direction on all four sides. You don't have one edge folded out, one edge folded in. Um, it's just gonna keep it looking a lot more professional if it's all folded and pressed the same direction. So usually once I start folding the seam and I'm using this little hot press here, um, I don't use it usually for the entire length of my seam. I just use it to get me started kind of as a guide. So don't worry about your seam allowances being perfect. You just want them to be around a quarter of an inch. So thankfully linen is super, super forgiving. You're gonna wash it, it's gonna shift, it's gonna stretch out a little bit. So don't worry about this being precise. Maybe a little change of plans. So I'm actually really liking the way that this is looking with the edges of the linen kind of frayed. I feel like it looks a little bit more organic than having them all folded and pressed over. So I think is what I'm gonna do is cut the other edge that I left my seam on so it's raw as well. I think I'm actually gonna fold all of these seams all the way around a quarter of an inch, give them a press, and then I'm gonna stitch it down. And I'm actually gonna pull the threads to actually get it to fray a little bit around the edge just so it looks a little bit more, um, I don't know, unfinished, unpolished, which is kind of the look I'm going for, I think. Don't you love sewing? You can always change things in the middle of your projects. So I'm just gonna give mine a press at, maybe I'll do a half an inch on this one since I'm not gonna be folding it over twice. I'm gonna fold mine over a half an inch, press it, and then stitch it. So go ahead and do that to all four edges of your wrap, and then we'll start sewing. Now before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this finished seam off of my piece of fabric. Okay, so I pressed that edge of my fabric. I'm gonna press this edge. Throw this in the wash at any point. It's gonna shift anyway, and it's really not gonna be that noticeable. So try not to stress over your seams being at exactly a half an inch all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I'm gonna try to fold the corners in before I sew them, just to give it a little bit more of a polish just on the ends, because um, corners can tend to be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna turn this and turn my camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. So we'll fold this in and we'll stitch along this edge here. Then it, when it comes to stitching this down, we'll fold this edge like this. And you could actually do all the four corners ahead of time, which might make it easier. Fold that edge up and then fold that in and we'll stitch this side down. So it'll look nice and polished. And then when this is sewn, I'll fray this edge as well. So I think I'm actually gonna pin all four of my corners so they're laying down so they don't shift at all while I'm sewing. So we're gonna start sewing in the corner here and I'm gonna be using a half an inch seam allowance. Again, I'm gonna be actually fraying the edge of my wrap here. So half an inch looks like it'll be about right. I'm gonna use a magnetic seam guide just to make sure my seams stay even all the way around. 
Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end of your project. Let's start sewing. All right, so we've just finished our shawl wrap here, and now I'm gonna show you a couple different options for styling it. Now, if you want more inspiration, obviously you can head over to the Sonda Floor website, click on all the different colors that they make their shawl in, and every color that they sell has it styled a little bit differently um, with different clothes underneath, so you can kind of get an idea of how they've styled it, but I'm gonna show you how I like to wear it. So the first option is going to be like Outlander inspired, I would say. So you're gonna start with your square of fabric and you're gonna grab opposite corners, folding it in half into a triangle. Like so. So you're gonna have the folded edge here. So grab it by the folded edge, over your head, back to the back lower area of your neck here, like so. Then you're gonna take your arms and you're going to cross them in front. So the piece of fabric in the right hand is gonna go to the left side. The left side is gonna go to the right. You're gonna pull it behind your back and you're gonna tie it into a knot. So this particular tie method isn't gonna work for everybody. It's really gonna depend on the size of your bust and your rib cage, but um, I can wear this pretty easily tied in the back in a double knot. So in the back, it's obviously down at a triangle and the knot is hidden under that triangle of fabric. So when it gets colder in the evening, you can kind of pull the fabric up a little bit to hug closer up on your neck to keep you a little bit warmer. Or if it gets too hot, you can obviously pull it down so you can see your dress or a shirt or whatever you had underneath. So that's look number one. Now we're gonna untie this and I'll show you one of the ways they have it styled on their website. I don't even know if you would technically call this styling or if it's just worn like a pashmina. So they just kept it folded like this on the back of the neck and literally just draped like a normal shawl. Now to me, this is just not how I would wear this. Um, but if you're just looking for a basic linen wrap, this would work great. So now we're gonna take these ends, since we have it on like this, and you're just gonna take it straight back and tie it behind your back. So it's similar to the first way to wrap it I showed you, except it's tied in the back and not crossed over in the front. So this is just like a little basic shawl. So if you had a really pretty dress on, this would be a great way to tie it so you could see the front of a dress or a beautiful shirt or blouse. And the knot is obviously hidden again behind that triangle of fabric in the back. So you can also take that triangle of fabric and tuck it into the knot so it hugs closer to your body like that. So that's another way to wear it. Now we're going to get into some of the really fun options. So we're going to leave it folded the same way. I'm just going to gather up the wings of the scarf here like so and we're gonna put it kind of asymmetrical on our body. So I'm gonna have this one facing towards the left side, like that. And we're gonna take this piece, wrap it around. This piece is gonna go around this way, so you're always going the opposite because obviously you want this to stay on. Now we're gonna take these pieces of fabric here, go up underneath the scarf, over the opposite shoulder, and you're just gonna work all the way around until this doesn't tuck in anymore. Take this one, 
up over the right side. Pull it off to the left. So obviously this is gonna keep your arms cool, but your neck really warm. Um, they have it styled pretty similarly on their website, I think for the exact same color. And obviously you can change what shoulder it's worn on. You can put it directly down in the middle, like so. You have a lot of flexibility with this. Now you can take that corner, if you want another way to style it, push it up underneath. So you're eliminating that point on the scarf altogether. And because this is so big and bulky, it really does stay in place. I've never had an issue with it falling um, while I'm wearing it. So that's another way that you can style it. Now I'm gonna show you a really fun little tip that I like to do um, when I'm wearing some of my knitted scarves. And I have done this with this one one time. So this is just a really inexpensive leather bracelet. I think I got this one either at the Gap Abercrombie & Fitch or American Eagle. These are like really, really old, but when I purchased them at the time, they were like $5, because I got them at the end of the summer, so they were on a clearance sale. But I do like to wear these on my wrist, but I also like to use these as shawl accessories. So you'll take this bracelet, by the way, this one is about a little bit more than an inch wide, I would say. And depending on how you're wearing it or what side, you're just gonna wrap this around your shawl like you would your wrist. You can tie it super tight, leave it looser, or tuck it in. Now, if you make leather things, this would be a really fun thing to make and gift somebody for like the holidays, but obviously you'd probably wanna tell them what it was for and that it wasn't just a bracelet, but um, this is a really fun way to wear this, to accessorize your scarves. You can do this with bandanas. Um, I really like how it fits on this one because of the size of this scarf. So, shawl accessory. Not just a bracelet anymore. So we're gonna take this off. And undo this. So much fabric, it takes a minute. All right, so again, it's still folded like our triangle. We're gonna throw it over our shoulders again, kind of wad up the fabric so it's a little bit smaller and do the same thing. Wrap opposite shoulder. This is how it's gonna stay on. So all I'm doing is really just tucking it up underneath and kind of rolling it over on itself, but this is just like a back tie, so it's bulkier in the front. The point is hanging down in the back, but um, again, you could put your bracelet on the front if you don't like it this high up on your neck. It's really hard to do this and stare at a camera, stare at a mirror here and put this on at the same time. But if you had a loose end like this, obviously you can just thread it through your bracelet. So the tighter you put this bracelet, obviously it's gonna condense down your shawl quite a bit, which is up to you on how you wanna wear that. But So again, another really fun option for tying this up. I'm gonna undo this, and I think I have one more option I wanna show you. I'm gonna take this off. This one's more plain and simple. But again, just play around with it. So if you guys come up with different ways to um, style these, please tag me on Instagram because I really want to see how you guys did it or if you want to make like a little video um, and tag me in it so I can share it on my account, that would be awesome. So take it, gather up the ends, triangle in the direct front of your body, grab the end pieces. We're going to go under the triangle in the front, tie it in a little knot, or you can just Fold it over once and do that. Gather it all up. And again, we're gonna use our bracelet. Do 
So you can play around with how it falls on your body. Um, because it's linen, it's super flexible, but this is just like a basic tie, so obviously you can put it off to the side um, like that. Put it directly in the front, and then you can play with how loose the fabric is, depending on how loose you left your um, bracelet here. But So that's it um, for all the ties that I can think of right now. I know as soon as I shut the camera off, I'll probably think of 20 other ones, but anyway, I hope that was helpful for you guys on how you can style your wrap. So that's it for this week's sewing tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll give this linen wrap shawl a try. Make sure that if you do, you tag me over on Instagram so I can see all your me maids. I love seeing handmade projects over there. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications so you know when I upload new content. And that's a wrap. I'll see you guys next time.